How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today we're taking a look at the Palm phone as a digital minimalist device. Let's get started. If you're new to the channel, my name is Jose, and here we talk about digital minimalism. So if that's something that interests you, make sure to subscribe. Again, we're taking a look at the Palm phone today, a very tiny device with great possibilities. I really liked using the Palm phone. It has a very nice form factor, very slim, very pocketable, and very easy to use. It has a lot of good things we'll get into, but it has one major caveat. So before purchasing this, make sure to look at the section that is in the description below that says one major caveat, and especially on the chapters of this video. So the Palm phone works very well with calls and texts. I did not have any issues getting messages, getting group text or getting images. It works with Verizon and other carriers. Make sure to get the unlocked version if you want to use it with other carriers, either here inside of the United States or outside of the United States. It works very well. I tested it with Verizon and T-Mobile and it works you know, 4G LTE speeds, no issues, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, hotspot, all the major things that you would expect for any major device nowadays in the United States, especially for minimalist devices. It even has a couple of the extra features that we would like to come to the digital minimalist devices like the Light Phone 2. It has a camera, it has maps, it has also the ability to install a couple of apps here and there like Uber or Lyft, Spotify. Again, it's a full replacement as a miniature smartphone. So in that regard, it works works very well, very fast. Um, it's not going to win any awards, I'm not gonna battle the OnePlus 8, Pixel 4, or Galaxy S21, but it's going to do very well in its category, like minimalist devices, right? Like the iPhone 2, it's a little bit faster, screen refreshes, it's LCD, and again, it has the cameras, which is really nice for those people that have been needing those a couple of extra features. But, there's always a but, the battery life is not that great. The device depletes battery life when the screen is on about 1% every two minutes. And that is my major thing with this device. It has all of the features. You can disable the ones that are distracting and only keep the mainly the basics. And honestly, you want to do that because otherwise it's going to deplete faster having all of that storage taken up. The device works very well for what it does but the battery life is just atrocious. Like I just cannot live with this battery life because when I was testing it, again, I was calling, texting, doing a couple of things here and there. And before the day is gone, I'm done with my battery life. I don't really have where to go. And it's really sad that that happens. You literally see the battery life depleting before your eyes. I wanted to just turn off the battery indicator because it was kind of causing me anxiety as I was using this device. And that's not a good feeling whenever you have a device that's supposed to be minimalist and have all of these great features for you to be detached from screens. Well, you know, you can choose to do that if you only do the basics. Now, the device has a very specific mode called life mode and also battery saver mode. When you enable those two, you're able to squeeze the battery life a little bit further. So you're able to use it for a full day and a little bit of the next day, hopefully, if you're not using it too heavily or making a couple of phone calls. Whenever I made a phone call, I dropped maybe five to 10%. And that's again, when it was just difficult to substantiate purchasing this device. This device, brand new, costs $250. Yes, $250. I know a lot of people that are like, well, the Light Phone costs $299. Yes, but the Light Phone lasts two days at the very least, at least for me on my usage. And I'm able to use the podcast and I'm able to use the music. Whenever I was trying to use music or podcasts on this thing, it was just very, very difficult to use. It doesn't have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, so I had to use an adapter, number one. But in other regards, again, you know, you're able to install Spotify and podcasts and all of these apps, which can be helpful, but if the battery life just depletes super quick, you're not going to be able to use it for long. So if you're planning to get a device like this, it's going to be a full replacement for your smartphone. No doubt, the camera is not amazing, it's not gonna win awards, but you're able to snap it, you're able to have some video chat if you need it, you know, from here or there. So you're able to use these things and, you know, it's a decent quality. It's very good for what it does, but try to keep what it does very minimal. So uninstall or disable the 
browser, disable YouTube, disable all of the stuff that's pre-installed so that the device doesn't, it's not using all of those resources. Make sure to put it on life mode, which essentially just kills all of the notifications and make sure to put it on battery life saving mode in order to preserve that battery life and squeeze it to its best. Again, if you do that and you use it as, you know, minimal device, you'll be able to use it for one day and a little bit of the next day. So I think that's good. It has USB-C, so it recharges pretty quick. Honestly, you're charging this thing in less than, I don't know, less than half an hour. So you recharge it to 100%, half an hour to an hour max, honestly, because the battery is so tiny that you'll be able to recharge it fast. That's the big caveat. And for 250, I wouldn't get it. Brand new, I wouldn't get it. I was able to snatch a refurbished unit from Amazon for about $100. And I think that's actually the price that it deserves. So $100, yes, this device is very good. It's a full replacement for your smartphone. It allows you to get into the minimalist vibe, into the digital minimalist essence. And if you use it for the basics, it will last you for a long time. But again, if you don't use it for that, then it's going to, it's going to be really hard to substantiate the purchase of this device for $250. And for $100, I think it's a decent investment. Now, there are some competitors in this space that I haven't reviewed, but other people have reviewed, so make sure to check those reviews. I'm hoping to get the Jelly 2, which is, again, the competitor for the small, minimal uh, phone usage, essentially. It has Android as well, a little bit of a better version, and it's very tiny as well. I think that one retails for about $200 as well, around that area, but it has better battery life, it has better connections, and things like, I believe it does have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And even if it doesn't, again, the battery life just beats out of the water in the reviews that I have seen. You also have the Light Phone, which again, it's also based on Android, but it has its own custom operating system. It looks different. It saves battery life. It has e-ink, right? It has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So if I were to spend $300 on the device, I would go for the Light Phone or the Punked MP02. I also have a review for that. I wouldn't go for this. But if I'm spending $100, this device is very good. Again, for the battery life that it gives you, if you're trying to squeeze it as much as you can and use it very little, I think it can work. But be very careful how you use it. Again, the battery will deplete, but USB-C allows you to charge faster. Now, if you have any questions or anything about the Palm phone or any other devices, make sure to leave it in the comments below. I always interact with you guys, and I'm excited for a couple of the extra minimalist devices that are coming our way in 2021. And we'll be reviewing Mudita and a couple of other uh, that are coming in the mail, hopefully very soon. So if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. I'll be interacting with you guys. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.